Hi, I'm Steve Cavanagh. I'm author of the Eddie Flynn series. Uh, this is a, a little video uh, to celebrate a few things that are happening at the moment. Uh, my first novel, The Defence, has just been published uh, in America. It came out on the 3rd of May and it's available in all good bookstores. The second novel in the Eddie Flynn series, The Plea, is released next week, Thursday at 19th of May. Uh, and my wife thought uh, in honour of this she would get some friends to uh, ask me some questions and for me to answer them uh, on camera. I haven't seen any of these questions. I don't know who they're from. So uh, it's a bit of an adventure, but we'll see how we go. So we have a, a gold envelope. Okay, so the first question that we have is from Gordon Mackay. Gordon asks, uh, which reality TV show would you most like to appear on? You must pick one. Right, great. I don't really watch a lot of reality TV shows. I really don't like them. I suppose MasterChef would be good. I can, I can make an omelette. I could certainly make an omelette and be eliminated uh, in the first round. Um, uh, second question from Gordon. Which book should be made into a film and which book should never have been made into a movie? Gordon, that's really difficult. Uh, which book should be made into a film? Um, I'd love to see John Connolly's Charlie Parker series as an extended TV series. Can I get away with that? If that's done really well, that would be awesome. Which book should never have been made into a movie? Oh, that's really difficult. Um, uh, I suppose... Uh, oh, very tough. Maybe Life of Pi, because I haven't seen it and I have no interest in it. Uh, next question. Ava Marsh asks, did Adam and Eve have navels? <laughs> and if so, why? That's a really fascinating uh, existential uh, question. Um, I'm going to say that Adam and Eve probably didn't exist. And therefore, in the fact they didn't exist, they didn't have any navels. Stephen Dunn asks, uh, I love a full Irish fried breakfast, Steve, but too often I find that the half a tomato on the plate is barely cooked. I've had this problem myself. Where do you stand on this issue and what can be done about it without restoring to tinned tomatoes? First of all, the tinned tomato issue, I don't think having tinned tomatoes solves your difficulty. What you really uh, have to have is a, a very well cooked tomato. Um, or you can skip that all together and have some muesli. Callie Taylor asks, uh, do you keep a beaker on your bedside table? Um, I don't keep a beaker on my bedside table uh, for any reason. Um, uh, not sure about that one. And next one from Callie, do you keep a pen and paper by the bed? What do you do if you have an idea late at night? Try to remember it or write it down. I very rarely have ideas uh, at night. Um, uh, if I do, usually I'll remember them. And if, if I don't remember it, it probably wasn't a very good idea in the first place. Uh, Pete Rosowski, the um, great detective, asks, uh, I would like to ask my learned friend, uh, the bald lawyer, whether you must wear a wig when you appear in court. Uh, this is an interesting question. I don't have to wear a wig. If I get rich someday, I might buy, I might buy a wig. But uh, I'm a solicitor, and solicitors who appear in court don't have to wear horsehair wigs. Although quite a few of my colleagues do wear wigs, but we all know who they are. Um, Helen Cadbury asks, what is your favourite word? Uh, my favourite word <laughs> is... Um, oh, verisimilitude. I don't know why. There you go. It's come to mind. Mark Edwards asks, what would be your strategy for surviving a zombie apocalypse? Now, this is something I've contemplated. Uh, I think I would have to keep a lot of wood in the garage so I can reinforce the house to fend off the zombies. Uh, I have a lot of tinned food and I also have sharp knives. I think that's probably all I can do for now without being arrested. Uh, Anthony Quinn asks, uh, you're in a pub at a crime writing festival and a scuffle breaks out between your agent and James Elroy. How would you handle it? Oh, 
Um, I think I would uh, break it up uh, and uh, then go and side with my agent because he, he's a lovely man and he's probably right. Uh, Lois Brady asks, what was your favourite book as a child, uh, a teen, in your 20s, in your 30s? As a child, I can remember being in Belfast um, on my road library and reading Captain Pugwash. Used to like a bit of Captain Pugwash. There's all sorts of strange uh, character names in Captain Pugwash, which I won't go into. As a teen, I loved uh, Lord of the Rings um, uh, and The Hobbit. In my 20s, my 20s, um, I, my 20s, I uh, read some Jane Austen, which I liked. Um, I also read uh, Raymond Chandler for the first time, so you can go with Chandler over Austen. And in my 30s, um, probably John Connolly's uh, Every Dead Thing. Rob Scrag asks, uh, who would you like to play Eddie Flynn in a movie? Um, I've always sort of avoided this question and skirted around it. A couple of guys would be really good. Mark Ruffalo would be really good. Um, there's also a man whose name I can't remember um, who would be very good. Uh, who else would be good? Yeah, Tom Cruise, because lots of people go and see the film. And I don't mention Eddie's height. Uh, Celine Clark asks, if you could take on a case in any era in America, what would it be? Um, oh, uh, the Scopes trial. I could um, have a go at that. Very famous trial. Um, but uh, that's a very hard question. I would probably lose that case, so maybe not that trial. Um, there's quite a few famous American trials. Love to have been a part of the O.J. Simpson case uh, for the prosecution, of course. Uh, Debbie Reed asks, do you have any rituals before you start to write? And do you wear lucky pants? Don't wear lucky pants. Um, any rituals before I write? Yes, I listen to a little bit of music and I pour as much coffee down my throat as I possibly can. Music varies. It, usually the Black Keys, something good and rocky and twangy to wake me up. Marnie Riches asks, if you could set a novel anywhere in the world, a really amazing location you could visit for research purposes, uh, where would it be and could Eddie Flynn conceivably be the main character in the story or would it have to be a new protagonist? So if I was going to have a massive tax write-off for a great holiday, um, where would it be? Maybe I'd really like to go to Florida. It would be great to take the kids to Disney World. That would be cool. Uh, Eddie could go to Florida. He can go on holiday and someone can be murdered. Yeah. Um, Danny Savage asks, how did you enjoy New York and did it live up to your expectations? I love New York. I had an awesome time. Met my publisher's Flatiron Books. Did a lot of touristy things. Did a lot of uh, untouristy things. Research. Stuff like that. Yeah, I loved, I loved New York. It was an awesome, awesome city. Jared Brennan asks, if you ran out of toilet roll, which book from your personal collection would you use to wipe your nose with? Um, that's a good one. Oh, yeah, basically you're saying, which book do I own that I really don't like? Um, that's tough. Bleak House, Charles Dickens. Never really got on with it. And there's a lot of it, so uh, I would have an abundance uh, of ammunition to wipe whatever I chose with. Uh, Nick Quantrill asks, um, seeing as you practice law yourself with a deep commitment to justice, would your conscience allow a man like Eddie Flynn to represent you? Of course, um, the justice system is a game. And if you're playing a game, you want the best player on your team. So, of course. Mason Cross asks, uh, how much of you is in Eddie Flynn? 